Hello everyone and welcome to the GPVWC World GT uh, Championship here at uh, Silverstone. A brilliantly crafted circuit here, fantastically crafted by Sean Stroud, so many thanks go out to you. And I'm Lewis McGlade, in the commentary box uh, with me is Mike Pittman, say hello. Oh yeah, nice to have someone new. <laughs> yes, uh, and how are you today? I'm not bad at all. Uh, yeah, let's get... Qualifying's already underway, so I'm happy. And there's no rain. Well, no rain so far. We did have a lot of rain in the practice session so far, and rain has been hinted at maybe rearing its ugly head. But we'll have to wait and see how that goes. We've got 4 minutes and 20 seconds of qualifying underway. And currently, Alex Cooper is leading the way in his Z4. He's done a 157.618 and already completed his lap. And we have someone spinning on screen. Who might that be? Well, it's one of the new uh, SLKs, to be honest with you. I'll have to find out. Uh, well, anyway, so... Uh, <laughs> That's saw, good, uh, isn't it? Yeah. Yep, yep. Start. I saw quite a few drivers struggling with the conditions earlier on uh, in the practice session when it was quite rainy. I think they're a bit more glad to have a dry track out for the qualifying session, hopefully to get it over and get the best out of each car. Um, now, I've, I've never driven one of these cars. <laughs> I'm going to assume they're quite difficult. You know, they're, they're GT cars, they're quite heavy, and they bite. I, I'm pretty confident they bite. If you lose traction on the rear wheels, it can spin you around, it can be pretty brutal. And so keeping a clear head for the next hour is absolutely crucial to getting the best result out of your car. Now, let's have a look at how many people we have out on the circuit. Apparently, we've got 30 cars out uh, ready to go racing in just about, I'm going to assume, about 15 minutes we'll be racing, correct? Yeah, we've got three minutes of qualifying, and we'll have a nice 10-minute break to get everyone uh, ready for, like you say, a good hour's driving. Yep, and from what I've heard, quite a few of these drivers, well, not, some of them aren't really used to driving for an hour straight. They tend to do things like what you see in the Formula Challenge, where you have, uh, you know, a short, maybe half an hour race here, and then a break, and then a half an hour race. And, it's, you know, it, this isn't the case with all leagues, but, uh, you know, here some of these drivers are being thrown in effectively at, at the deep end. It's not um, a four or eight hour endurance race, but it is... Um, you know, an hour long. That's quite a long period of time to keep your mind focused. And they're doing 1 minute 57, so I'm going to assume they're going to be doing about th possibly 32, 33 laps of the uh, the front runners. Um, and, and with that, you know, that's quite a lot of laps just to keep your mind focused. Because as soon as you lose concentration, especially if it rains, then you could end up, um, you know, DNFing, crashing out. Uh, or even, you know, having to make a visit to the pits and losing an awful lot of time and positions. So, you know, it's just keeping that mindset, keeping absolutely focused on the road ahead and, you know, taking as many points as possible uh, from, from the race today. Yeah, we have found it's quite an interesting uh, time, really, to be an hour. Like I say, it's not quite endurance racing, so you don't have to be quite uh, that lethargic and carry through. But equally, it's, it's a lot longer than some of these guys are used to. Uh, we've got a good mix of drivers. That's why I love this championship. Got the guys who are right at the top of the Super League, all the way down to, like you say, the Formula Challenge guys, or even people that aren't in any of the career ladder. Um, it's, it's a great spectacle to see. Yeah, I must agree. And I think James says that it's one of his favourite league to commentate on. And uh, I'm going to look at the championship now as Cooper, who is currently sitting in provisional pole position and I can see some grey clouds I believe so hopefully we'll uh, get this session finished and we'll see where everyone's standing in in the uh, in the standings at the moment so we've got Cooper who's sitting on 100 uh, on 83 points even 100 is quite a lot um, 83 points um, his teammate from the last round who I do not believe is on the circuit today um, Euler is sitting in second place 22 points behind that is quite the margin um and behind them is james johnson on 36 points so really looking at that it seems like midnight motorsport have a huge lead in the championship in fact it is almost 100 points 
So, you know, they've got such a such a huge lead in the championship. And I believe they are sitting one and two. They are indeed sitting one and two at the moment is Alex Cooper and David Fiddock. So it's looking very good at the moment. Very handy for Midnight Motorsport. Yeah, you got to think, uh, Lucas has missed another round, which is probably why he's sitting where he is. It might have been slightly closer, but even then you think Midnight would have been even further ahead. Um, but their replacement in Fiddick there is, is more than adequate. I mean, he's showing his speed already in second there. But equally, we've seen him in, if anyone follows the Formula, uh, Formula Challenge, you'd have seen him down there doing a great work. Uh, I think he got two podiums this week as well. No, last week, sorry. Yep, always an impressive drive there, and I think that's what what we what you said earlier is that all of the drivers here come from many different leagues, and you know show their skill all out on the same grid. Now, just to run you through the qualifying positions at the moment, as we said, Alex Cooper sits in first place at the moment. He did a one fifty seven six. Qualifying eight. is finished, by the way. Qualifying so this is, is final. Finished, so qualifying is over. Um, so he is followed by his teammate David Fiddick. So it is a front row lockout for Midnight Motorsport. That is going to be a great start to their afternoon, to their evening, even. Oscar Hardwick uh, sits in uh, P3. Michael Ballard puts his car, his Jaguar, into fourth place. Good drive from him after a DNF in uh, Germany. James Johnson in fifth. Jake Cooper in sixth. Matthew Williams in seventh. Puoti in eighth. Uh, Jacobs in ninth. Hansen in 10th and that is your top 10 at the moment we've got 30 cars to get through so I will try and get through this as quickly as possible and my R factor has crashed so that's wonderful um, I will have to leave you to run through the rest of it whilst I get back onto the server uh, no problems let me just pull up my list as well because unlike you uh, I'm trying to multitask so we're in a 10 minute practice now before the race so let me give me a chance. Uh, so we went down from 10th. So then we had Glenn Guest in 11th for Slipstream, uh, followed by David Junt for Norgen. Morton Vernerson on his first race in here with his own team in the Mercedes SLS. Uh, John Hickam makes it 14th with Mark Stanton in 15th. Uh, Franz Schneider in fifth, uh, 16th, that'll be, and Simon Malouche in 16th. Uh, sorry, 17th. People are leaving the server, it's causing problems here. Uh, Simon Crane is in 18th. Miles Dixon, 19th. Boyd Bryson down uh, in 19th, uh, 20th. Sorry, that's a bit of a surprise because then he's uh, fourth in the championship standings. Uh, Andre Walters in 21st. Uh, Timu Toika in 22nd. Scott Bennett in 23rd. Uh, Martin Palm in 24th. Uh, oh, yeah. Adrian Sargo in 25th. Uh, Demetrius in 26th, Lewis Redshaw in 27th, uh, Philip Morby in 28th, Mark Fuller in 29th, uh, Ben Hovell in 30th, and I think that will be everyone. The other people that have been in have rejoined since, so they actually have already been mentioned. So that's our list so far. Obviously, there's quite a f you know some familiar names there, I'd assume. That People who have been watching uh, will know what's going on. We've got the obvious that we've already alluded to the top two of the Midnights there. Uh, Oscar Hardwick sitting in third after his last run where he really could have had a podium out of it and he got uh, taken away from him in the last couple of laps after some tyre issues, so he'll be wanting to avoid that. Um, Michael Ballard showed some real real skill last time out. Uh, I, think he picked up a, I think he picked up a point last time, but he did have some really great drives up until... Uh, some, some issues. Um, we've got James Johnson in fifth, who's actually sitting uh, third in the championship at the moment, so potential chance for him there. Jake Cooper, we've seen him come back now, so he's had a a good good spell. He had a couple of pole positions, and he's been leading races. Uh, he had a couple of unfortunate incidents, so hopefully he can come back into the fray. And yeah. I'm right in thinking we got you back. Uh, I, I am back in the server. That's always a, a joy to see that. To Just before I ran out of things to say. Fantastic. Yep. Um, but looking at it, so it was... Who was it who took pole? It was Alex Cooper who took pole. Um, if I'm believed... Yep, I am. I am correct. That's good. Always a good start to remember who's on pole position. Uh, I think that's his first pole of the season. Um, as we've had pole positions so far in Italy from Dave Carr-Smith. 
Uh, Jake Cooper then had a pole position back to back in Austria and Belgium. And then Euler had the pole position in, uh, in Germany last time out a month ago. Uh, I'm just wondering, with a month in between each race, um, you know, I think this was brought up last time in Germany where some of the grid changes between each race. We have, you know, some drivers leaving, some drivers joining, some teams not appearing, um, you know, not getting enough drivers, you know, whatever the case. Do you think some drivers come into this maybe just a little bit out of practice, especially when it comes to, like, race form? Uh, I'd have thought some definitely do, considering obviously, uh, like I said, quite a lot of them do, do drive in the career ladder. We'll also, you know, have been doing that last week, so really you're probably talking at a week's week's notice at best. Um, and then you account for, like you say, the replacement drivers coming in who, you know, God knows how much notice they've had. Um, some of them I know would probably have been thrown in today. Uh, but the people that have come in are, are such high calibre still that the you know, you won't notice that they're not doing it to their full potential. Um, the consistency is shown why Alex Cooper's at the top of the standings. He hasn't missed a race yet. You know, obviously he's got the skill as well. But that that consistency really, really drives the points up tally in this. Yeah, and we are here at Silverstone, which is one of the, I think it's one of the favourite circuits for a lot of these drivers, especially. Uh, the uh, the British drivers tend to really enjoy this circuit. I think everyone, every driver, really enjoys the circuit. Some don't, some do. It's it's one of these circuits. I know plenty of people who don't know. Uh, it's one of these circuits. It's a bit like Marmite. I think it's you either love it or you hate it. It's one of those things. Um, I, must, I must say this this particular track that we're driving on the Water Designs, it is fantastic. It is uh, absolutely I, excellent. I've been driving on it pretty much all week, getting ready for the Formula Challenge next week. Um, and it is an absolutely excellent track to drive on. And I, th I think some of the drivers, you know, they've got, they're going to enjoy this. And I th think when it's a track that you enjoy, you tend to encourage yourself more to practice more. And so the drivers that enjoy this may have practiced, you know, a lot more on it. Some, some other drivers may be encouraged more to practice on the tracks that they really dislike. But, you know, I think you're going to see a real mix of, of drivers who enjoy the circuit and, and drivers that don't. I mean, that's the same with every circuit that we go to. Uh, but with an hour-long race, you know, so, some drivers may get so sick of just driving this track that they don't like that an hour is can become quite painful within the cockpit just to see the same terrain. But yeah, as as we said earlier, this is an absolutely excellent build. I think that was an R8 just spinning off. Uh, coming into Brooklands there, so that's always a, a good place to spin off. Done that many a time in my little Formula Challenge car. Uh, one thing that I really like about the World GT is just the mix of cars. You know, the the colour schemes, the just just even like the mix. You know, you're not sit sit looking at the you know just open wheel cars. You know, just like the same open wheel car with a different skin. You're looking at um, Z4s. You're looking at Jags, you're looking at you know Chevrolets, Ferraris, Porsches, Aston Martins. It's it is a really nice thing to to look at to see a grid with such a mix of you know different drivers with different driving styles in their own different car. It's an absolutely excellent sight to see. I think. Oh, it really is. There's some brilliant liveries going on. But like you say, the different cars they make a difference as well to certain circuits. We found that obviously there's a few different. There's not a huge difference between them. But there's a few where we had, um, I think it was Monza, the Ferrari was particularly good. Um, I think at last, the certain cars deal better in the rain as well, the power being putting the power down. The Corvette particularly is very uh, awkward in putting the power down, whereas I think things like the Mercedes and the uh, very popular BMW seem to be the, the two uh, stronger candidates as an all-rounder, I feel. Yeah, of course, the BMW took the top four positions out last time in Germany. So, you know, that, that BMW seems to be pretty popular at the moment. And, you know, we've got... But this is the thing, is that, as you said, some cars, they just... They're so mixed up that, um, you know, the cars are better in very, very specific circumstances. You know, as, as you said, on specific tracks, one car may be better than another. This is what we're looking at now, is the VOD Bull car. I believe this is Puoti. Um, am I correct? Yep, that is correct. Yep, you're this on. is Puoti. As um, the on-screen graphics I can see in sim racing aren't showing you correctly who the drivers are. I think it's constantly saying that you're sim race TV. But still, that is confirmed that that is Puoti. 
this car is going to be a lot better at you know going down the straights, getting the real speed. I think turning may be a bit more difficult, but you know that that car is good for speed. I think we'll see. That you, definitely on this track, you'll see the effects of all the different cars because of the stylization of the track. Um, I think this is what we were saying uh, a while ago when I was doing some FSR stuff at Silverstone, was that the reason why some of the, the drivers like the circuit is because of the way that you can change your setup, you know, dependent on driving, driving style. It's not like other circuits in that sense, where there's multiple pathways that you can take if you want straights, if you want turns. I mean, yes, you can at other circuits, but there's so many different variations of where you can go, you know, because of, like, the amount of overtaking opportunities, whether you want whether you think you're going to be a defensive drive, whether you think you're going to be uh, attacking through the entire race, you, you've got to think of all of these things and how to weave your setup in between that. And this plays heavily into the difference between all of the cars. You know, all of the cars are, are obviously different. You know, you've got the, the Z4s, you've got the Chevrolets. And so they're, they're better in their own little way. So if you're overtaking, if you're in a BMW and you're trying to overtake a Chevrolet, you've really got to think a lot harder about where you're going to overtake that car, like such as into Brooklyn's, maybe a better overtaking opportunity as opposed to down the hangar straight because of, you know, the, the speed of the car. It's just, this is where you need to be, you know, a thinking driver. You can't just simply go, oh, it will fall into place. You've really got to know your stuff before oh, trying to overtake a driver. Oh, definitely. I mean, you think all the cars are so different. The braking points are so different for them all as well. Even just trying to overtake, I don't know, you, you say you're doing Formula Challenge, you know, at least you know everyone else around there is driving the same type of car and that they're going to realistically try and brake at the same sort of time. In these, the, you know, certain drivers are, get the power down straight out the corner, other ones are braking really early. It's it's really difficult to, to know unless you follow someone for a little while, um, which you don't have the time to do. No, it may be an hour-long race, but you know anything can happen in that hour, and it's all about keeping the focus and taking the most out of every single lap. Now, we've only got about 16 seconds left of this warm-up session, and then people will complete their laps, and the warm-up session will be over, and then we will move on into the race. So we will know who's going to win in just over an hour, and who would your, your money be on at the moment? Who do you think has the biggest chance of taking the win? Wow. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously, the yeah, I get asked this every week, and I always struggle. Um, I mean, you look at the Midnight Boys, and they are outstanding, to be honest. I mean, um, to go slightly different, I don't think Cooper will quite do it. I quite like the look of David Fiddick possibly trying to do this one. But then again, you get some massive surprises if we get rain in this. It's anybody's game, but David Fiddick will be the one I'll, I'll uh, pump for. How about yourself? You haven't had much time necessarily to... Uh, be around these cars, but anyone takes your fancy so far? I, I'm, I'm going to go ag again with Midnight Motorsport, but I will go with Cooper. I just, I think that you know, if you look at like the championship, he has won two of the races so far in Austria and Belgium. Um, you know, this is a pole position for him. It's, you know, it's on home turf. I just think he looks pretty strong in the car, and that would be where. I'd be leaning towards. I mean, what did he take pole position by? Let's have just a little look. Um, I would tell you, I think it's about 800 seconds. Um, you know, I think I, I, that's that's just where I'm going to put my money is on Alex Cooper. That's okay. I mean, one lap doesn't do it, but that, he's a very good shout, obviously. I mean, you look at the championship leader, he's top of the standings this time. The interesting thing he's managed to pull off so far that some people have been failing on is the strategy. It, yeah. It's the thing over the hour that makes such a difference. He's uh, the midnight seem to have been getting this bang on where they're they're not actually changing for tyres. They're managing to conserve it for the whole race, which means their pit stops are a good thirty seconds, twenty seconds less than anyone else. Um, I mean, certain cars burn up the tyres and can't do it. I know all the Corvettes struggle, um, but the Ferraris and the BMWs seem to manage to um, keep it going. Yeah, and as always, strategy will be key uh, when we get the race underway, whether it rains, when to change onto the wets, whether it stays dry, whether you're actually going to pit stop. It's very interesting, and this is where you know, you've know you got so many different variables to think about when it comes to this race, and we are about to get underway if we switch over to the race session at any point. Um, 
I, I think this could be an extremely interesting race. As we have, you know, we've said this before, that we've got so much talent throughout the grid from all of their different leagues. This could be an absolutely excellent race, as it has been for the previous four races this season. This is the halfway point of the season. Um, and it looks like Alex Cooper is currently the strongest person. But, you know, we'll have to wait to see. Will he crack? Can, as you said, Vidic take the win? And uh, I'm sure we'll get them all out to grid ever so slightly. Um, I'm just wondering, as I've been told, we have seen rain at every single race so far. Um, whether it's in a qualifying session or in the race session, we have seen rain. Rain is fairly likely, um, as it always is in Great Britain. And so I wonder if we will see that extra element come into the race and just make everyone think that a little bit harder. To be honest, I'm getting to the stage now where I'd be disappointed if it didn't. I know some people might think, oh, it rains every time. But it in makes it interesting over the hour. It means you can't just sit back and relax. You've got to, you've got to be very careful. And quite a lot of them don't. It takes quite a lot of rain because we don't have intermediates on these tyres, so on these cars. So it takes quite a lot to decide to change to wets, which makes some interesting racing on the uh, dry tyres on a wet track. Yep, and I agree with you there. I love a bit of rain. It just spices everything up. Even if it happens in every single race of the season, I really don't mind. Rain makes things really interesting, and it can really spice up a race, especially if it's been a bit of a boring one, which we haven't had so far. But, um, you know, just looking at it, if it rains, we could have such an exciting show. Um, and they are all lined up on the grid, as it looks, and Alex Cooper leads them all away for Midnight Motorsports. Uh, behind him is his teammate, David Fiddick. Uh, then in third place in the second row of the grid is Oscar Hardwick, joined by Michael Ballard. Uh, good, good stuff that we said from him there. He did do well last time out. It was just, uh, I think it was a front splitter that he had missing and, and that caused quite a lot of grief for him in the race. In fifth place is Johnson, followed by Cooper. Then we have Williams and Jacobs on the fourth row. Hansen and Guest uh, is in 9th and 10th. 11th place is Junt. 12th is Deconic. Morton Vernison lines up in 13th place. John Hicken in 14th. Michael Stanton in 15th. And I believe that's halfway through the grid. So if, would you like to read out the rest or do you want me to continue? Uh, uh, you'll have to, I'm afraid, because I um, haven't Roger actually that. got the data in front of me, I'm afraid. Roger that. Well, Franz Schneider, a driver who I'm fully aware of from FSR, lines up in 60th and I think I've just seen a little bit of rain as they're going around Brooklands and yep you can see that on your screen now as they're heading down the old pit straight so things could be getting very interesting just a little bit later on in this race. Uh, Mel Hewish is in 17th, Stroud in 18th, Miles Dixon lines up 19th alongside Bryson for uh, FA Racing. Then let's just have a little look further down. Uh, we've got Waters in 21st, Toyka in 22nd, 23rd is Bennett, 24th is Palm, 25 is Willis, 26th is Shergill, uh, 27th is a name that I'm going to struggle to pronounce. So I'm just going to I'm just going to say Demetrius, and I will completely apologise for later on in the race. Um, 28th is Redshaw, 29th is Morby, Jordan Weeks is 30th, although apparently he's got a DQ. Not really sure why that is. Uh, Fuller is, Mark Fuller is out on track for 31st, uh, then we've got Ben Horrell in 32nd, lining up the back of the grid in his Audi R8 as they're coming through the Maggots, Beckett's and Chapel Complex. They are quite a way off the lead, which is what you're looking at now, uh, just lining up on the grid. We do have rain, I'm going to assume they are on slicks, um, I wonder if anyone was brave enough to start on the wets. I would doubt it considering it, it takes quite a lot of rain like I was saying to get these guys uh, for it to be worth it on a wet tyre uh, I'd expect most people to be on a dry we haven't actually seen many people go on to wet yet whenever people have done it, it's been the wrong call so it's going to take a brave person for it to do it and for it to pay off yeah well with that in mind I think let's have a little look at where the back markers are I think they're all lined up on the grid pretty much now so I'm going to look to the front as they are all in position we have the light starting above them there is three four 
five and we'll see who gets the best start as Alex Cooper launches. I'm just seeing who's going to get a bad start here. Oh, who's that coming up the grid on the left hand side? Let's have a little look. Uh, Alex Cooper leads through Abby. Fiddick is just behind. Lose that Oscar Hardwick. Look at that. He's up into second place. Absolutely excellent stuff there from Hardwick taking complete advantage. Uh, right now, down the rest of the grid, we've had Fiddick drop down into third place. He's under attack now from the Vodball car racing car of James Johnson. Doesn't quite make that move stick as they head down the Wellington straight. Uh, not so much stuff from the start. All that as a Jaguar running wide there. Um, really, I can't see too many cars going sideways. I think I'll have to just look a little bit further down the grid. Uh, it seems like everyone got a good start. A couple of cars probably caught up in some contact. I didn't see. Did you see anyone getting caught up? Uh, it doesn't seem that way. There's a few people that got <coughs> got a little bit bogged down, but there's a nice chop and change. But everyone's had a like, clean start. Yeah. I'm yeah, quite well impressed. they are all bit bunching up throughout the grid as here you have on your screen. Let's have a look and see who that is. Um, I believe that is... Oh, sorry, can't quite tell you that at the moment. It's a BMW Z4, so I can give you that much. Um, now, that is Matthew Williams, I believe, on your screen as they're heading down into this complex. You don't want to go side by side through here, but I will see who's brave enough to do so. Uh, we've said that they're going to probably be on slicks at the moment and as such grip is going to be at a minimum. So rain <laughs> is pouring down now at Silverstone. No driver seems to be particularly struggling as I think we've got a couple going side by side coming down that straight. Wait. Just have a little look. Everyone seems to be keeping position. Uh, we've got uh, James Johnson on Fiddock for third. Uh, yes, you are correct. So let's have a look. He's ahead, heading into the final complex of corners. Oh, there's a little bit of contact with Fiddick just there, but Johnson is still behind. Johnson looks a little bit faster as we've seen um, him try to take a couple of opportunities throughout. But I must say, um, it's Cooper, who, who was in that Ferrari at the start, who had a pretty good start. He was up alongside. I thought he would, oh, he's just clipped the other uh, curve on the inside of Abbey there just getting a little bit out of focus as this is what we said about James Johnson going oh he's he's going to get the cut back on Fiddick he's going to get past that is it James Johnson up into third place he's into a podium place now we have 57 minutes remaining they have done one lap Fiddick getting a little bit out of touch with the ground uh, as he comes back onto the Wellington straight uh, Alex Cooper got a good lead there 1.3 seconds in front of Oscar Hardwick I've seen these two go at each other in the Porsches only a few, uh, only I think it was yesterday actually, they were going hammer and tongs. The Volvo car of James Johnson in third place, uh, followed by Fiddick, followed by Cooper. Michael Ballard drops to sixth place uh, after I think he went over the curb a couple of times and that is why he's dropped back just a little bit. On your screen now we've got uh, Michael Ballard's teammate, let's have a look at where he is. Um, so he's, he's under attack by Morton Vernison, as you can see on your screen. And Frode Hansen behind, I believe, is under attack by Simon Melhewish. So this is, this is what we said earlier. Oh, is that Jacobs going wide? I believe that is Jacobs going wide there, uh, dropping a couple of places coming through Cops. Blue sky in the background, I think I can see. So this might start to dry up ever so slightly. But, you know, the car's grouped up. I'm wondering who has the best. Oh, he's lost his front splitter as well. So Jacob there, pro that's probably why he's struggling. We saw this the last time out with his teammate, Michael Ballard, who lost his front splitter and, you know, just couldn't get pace. They're all bunching up once again. He's keeping, uh, Jacob is keeping his position in front. Oh, let's have a look where he is. He's dropped down to 15th. Um, so he is he is dropping pretty quickly now, as I say that. He's jumped straight into the pits. Going to try and get that replaced. Alex Cooper does the fastest lap. Two minutes, 0.364. We've had quite a bit going on throughout. And that is not going to cease here, as this is uh, Simon Melhewish and uh, Bryson going a little bit side to side. But he gets the move done. Melhewish doing a pretty good job there, coming onto the pit straight. That is a very dark Mercedes though. Yeah, I think they were very late sort of entry into this and unfortunately, but it, very noticeable nonetheless. Uh, our two sort of dark nights driving through here, so we'll see, see how much of an impression they can make. 
Yep, that is the case. They are very dark. They are very striking. I do like the SLS in, in black. It does look very striking. You can see that they've got a little bit of purple on the car, I think I saw. Now then, uh, who is this? Let's just have a little look. I believe... Um, I'm not sure who that is. I cannot see it on my screen at the moment. Um, I believe it's Bryson. Uh, I really need to follow this a lot better. So, Bryson there, he's up into 15th. Let's have a look at where he started. He started in 17th, so he's climbed a place, a lap, or at least that's what I, from I can see. Uh, who's this who's gone out already? We've had Vottas, who's gone out for suspension so far, and Sean Stroud did not finish. So, uh, unfortunately, they're the creator of the track, not having the best races around it. Uh, Jacobs has left the pit, from what I can see. Tweaker was also in the pits, and I'm going to assume Lewis Redshaw was as well, because he is quite far back. Uh, on your screen at the moment, that is Jake Cooper there in that Ferrari 458. That is a striking livery. Behind him, Michael Ballard, uh, under attack by Glenn Guest, who's just going to have a look coming down into club. Is he going to make the move? Yes, he is. That 458 now just past the XKR of Michael Ballard. So Guest going pretty well. Uh, Michael Ballard, though, got him, you know, further, I don't know if it's further in the race than last time, but at least he's got his front splitter attached. Not to be said to his teammate who has got it back, but Horrell now has suspension damage and is out of the race. That's unfortunate for him after all the few retirements, which is more than we've normally had actually. Everyone's been pretty good at getting the cars home. Um, so it's a bit sad to see that after seven minutes we're a few drivers down, but nonetheless we'll persevere with what we've got left. <laughs> Yep, and Alex Cooper is leading this bunch still. Now he's got a 4.5 second gap. I think this is what has been brought up, though, is that because this is an hour-long race, a 4.5 second gap can possibly mean pretty much nothing, really, because this is all about strategy. Maybe Oscar Hardwick isn't pitting. Maybe he is. Maybe Alex Cooper's, you know, pitting a couple of times. We don't know what's going to happen here. I don't think he'd pit a couple of times, but, you know, you see where we're going with this, is that you you don't get the full picture until at least three quarters of the way through the race to see where everyone's going. Um, and I think this is why this is so popular is because of the fact that you don't really know where anything's going. From what I can see, Simon Mel Kewish is now out of the race for a reason which I'm not quite sure of. Uh, but that was the very black uh, Mercedes SLS that we saw earlier. And let's have a look at what's going on. This is Fiddick on Johnson, I believe. Um, that's what we saw. Yes, so Fiddick is closed on Johnson quite considerably. We've, we've lost Hardwick. We've lost Hardwick. Yes, that is a very good point. I'm, where Let me is find he? him. He's, yep, he's down in 5th, 6th. Yeah. 3 foot 5th. So I apologise that I'm not sure quite where he disappeared to. But he seems to be struggling as well at the moment. He's yeah. Just about to lose another place there. Yep, he did lose that place to fellow Ferrari driver Glenn Guest. But he is dropping back. That is quite surprising. And I'm sure we'll find out why ever so slightly. I I mean looking at looking at the data that we have at the moment, possibly he started on the wet, although you know, you said that it needs to be pretty wet for someone to start on the wets, and it wasn't the case it was it was damp if we had intermediates it would be intermediate style weather but you know that wasn't the case so i'm wondering why he's struggling maybe he just had a little off-track excursion and that cost him a few places as this is fiddick i can see fiddick going um, up alongside james johnson going into brooklands uh there's no position change at the moment johnson is going to have the inside line through luffield as he does i wonder if fiddick's going to have a better drive coming down the old pit straight um doesn't quite look like it also, this is this was something that we brought up earlier was that, you know, the Chevrolet and the BMW was that if you're in a BMW trying to overtake a Chevrolet, it may be a bit harder on the straights. Fiddick did close up there. He was in the slipstream of the Chevrolet. Uh, he runs wide going through cops, which I, th I think this is to be kind of um, expected. I think we just saw Alex Cooper's uh, BMW Z4 go past uh, in the foreground of the camera. He's 6.6 .6 seconds in front of this small train here that uh, James Johnson has kind of built up. There is, I think there's five cars in this at the moment. Let's have a look. We've got James Johnson followed by Fiddick, Cooper, Guest and Hardwick as, yep, Fiddick is on the inside going into Stowe. 
So, yeah, Fiddick's through. So, Fiddick gets past James Johnson. James Johnson is not going to let that happen. He's going to try and make a move, possibly coming into club. He's going to go on the outside. And he doesn't quite make it stick. Oh, there's a little bit of a nudge there with Fiddick. But it looks like Fiddick is through at the moment. But no. No. Wow. This is going to be an impressive move if James Johnson can keep it together. He's going to have... Oh, yes. Wow. What a move there from James Johnson. That is not a corner that I would recommend for overtaking, but he's done it. James Johnson retakes second place in front of David Fiddock. Yeah, we saw this last time with Johnson. That that Corvette seems to uh, struggle at the. It's all right on the wet and it's all right on the dry. When it's somewhere in the middle, the the times drop. We we saw him and uh, Hardwick yo-yoing quite a lot uh, in the last race. Their the times could you know they were two seconds apart down to tenths they went up to like 10 15 seconds apart um but it's all on these tires and the way the cars work with with the weather yeah cooper there having a little look on fiddick fiddick could possibly be dropping down another place ever so shortly if cooper can get that car sorted out but yeah it is it is always an interesting thing with drivers is that when they're behind a driver you know you've obviously got the slipstream so that you know you can build up more speed and momentum down a straight and this is why you'll sometimes see a driver getting past another driver and then maybe dropping back past that driver again you know it's, it is this yo-yo effect that you've said about also i would like to apologize when i said club i meant veil club is the next corner round um which is where james johnson actually overtook Fiddick once again as we said cooper is closing in on Fiddick ever so slightly and this is just a small train um which I think Alex Cooper is taking advantage of at the moment. With these cars battling it out, you know, um, you know, slowing down each other effectively and going side by side as Fiddick does look like he is about to move over. I think that was uh, Cooper flashing some lights. Fiddick is going to try and make a move. A oh, there's a little bit of contact there and I think Fiddick's have been punted off ever so slightly. Cooper is, there's, there's even more contact there with Cooper and um, James Johnson and Glenn Guest has taken advantage of that opportunity. Goes around the outside of Vale. Fantastic move there for Glenn Guest to get up into second place. Certainly it was a little bit actually there by Cooper as well, but Fiddick manages to keep the, the place. Um, don't know whether Cooper will be reprimanded a bit there for using his lights. I'm not quite sure that was in uh, the best of spirits. Um, as we see, is that Hardwick just going wide there Hardwick as well? Hardwick going wide there. He is, oh, I'd say he probably gained an off-track advantage from that. Um, debatable maybe, but we'll have to have a little look. He went off through Abbey and then basically cut this entire section. And now all that oh, and James Johnson's spun. Where's that? Let's have a little look. He's dropped down now into eighth place. Um, but yeah, he just had a little half spin there on the apex. And he's going to be under attack now from Hicken and Schneider if he doesn't get that car sorted out. Um, Whilst that's Hicken going on, sorry, we've got Guest was trying out to get the uh, second off Fiddick still. He's just gone wide, actually. so he just missed that now. Okie dokie. So there we go, Fiddick there back into second place. Guest now, all oh, that's Cooper going a little bit off the track um, out of Luffield. So Cooper, Cooper's looking pretty strong in fifth. I think Cooper's a little bit faster than he is. Hardwick now up into fourth although i think that's debatable whether he should be there i mean i'd need to have a little look at that again but I, i'd expect him to have to give a place back he was, yeah. he's been driving very aggressively there as well when cooper tried to take him back just about within the the limits i'd have thought but it was pushing it yeah i'd agree i think oh as hardwick gets the car a little bit sideways coming out of the exit of that chapel going uh, going through that um, complex even coming out of chapel uh, but either way, he is going to be under attack now from Cooper, I believe. is going to get past in this straight if he can get a decent drive. This is Ferrari on Ferrari. However, two different Ferraris. And Cooper is passed in his 4.58. Breaks ever so slightly into Stowe. Gets it turned in. Excellent move there. Um, looking at this, as you can see in the foreground of your screen, Guest ever so slightly dropping back from Fiddick. Fiddick's got that car all hooked up at the moment. Fiddick seems to be pretty strong but not as strong as his teammate, Alex Cooper, who now has 12.2 seconds to his teammate. That is a sizable margin that will give him pretty good um, championship points, you know, you know, a good advantage in the championship over the other people in consideration that the, only, the person second in the championship is his teammate who is not here. On your screen now is Jake Cooper getting the car turned into this complex. I'm not really sure where we are. I think we're just about to head on to the hangar. Uh, yes, no, the, um, I cannot remember the name of it now. 
Uh, let's have a little look at the track map. This is the Wellington Strait. I would get it out eventually, heading down into Brooklands. Um, so this, wh whereabouts is he on track? He's fourth. Yes, he is in front of Hardwick, obviously with that move that he did through Stowe. I, I'm still not too happy with Hardwick's move, even though, yes, obviously he has dropped down to fifth now. But I think that may have cost Cooper time. Um, you know, as with, with this excursion and this quite forceful driving there from Hardwick. Uh, we are currently looking at, I believe this is Williams. I'm just going to have a look down. Um, and it is, he is going side by side there with Martin Palm down the old pit straight. Let's have a look, see who comes out on top heading into Cops. Of course, one of them would have to give way. I, I cannot recall um, two cars going side by side except from a start in an old F1 race. Um, Cops is not... Oh, he's actually lost the place on the exit of Cops, I believe. Uh, he yes, went, he went a bit wide into the corner and it didn't give him the drive out of the uh, the previous corner, I'm afraid, there. So that's why he lost that position. Yeah, so Martin Palm, excellent move there to demote Matt Williams down into 15th place. Martin Palm looking pretty strong there. At the moment, Alex Cooper does the fastest lap of the race, again showing extra dominance now. A uh, good lap, though. Let's have a look at where that was. That was a 158, uh, 159.1. He's been consistently going going quickly, uh, much quicker than anyone else, really, and that's why the gap is 12.8 seconds. That is a huge margin, even to have at this early stage in the race. I think that's, about, that's basically a second a minute. Well, not quite that much, but, you know, there's, there's a thing, I think it's roughly a second a minute is what he's gaining uh, effectively over the rest of his opposition. Uh, I will apologise because my maths is terrible. As there we have Alex Cooper on your screen at the moment. Uh, let's have a look and see where else. Jake Cooper again flashing his lights. Uh, not really sure why, but still, I think there is a, a is there a ban on flashing lights during this race? Yeah, you shouldn't really be doing it. It's, it causes particular problems, obviously, to the driver in front and can put them off. We've seen, we did see it in uh, it was either at Monza or Red Bull Ring, uh, where a couple of guys. Uh, it and it put the guys off in front and that they were uh, they would have they were sort of reprimanded afterwards for it so it'd be interesting to see there's a few drivers going around with with the lights permanently on as well uh, further back in the field interesting stuff then and we'll see what happens post race with that but michael ballard currently is um keeping oscar hardwick under pressure heading down into the maggots beckett's and chapel section Obviously, this was this was what we were discussing was the two different cars, seeing who has the most advantage. I think the Ferrari has got the most advantage through the sectors such as Maggots, Beggots, and Chapel. However, I do think that the Jag has possibly got the straight line speed as they are. Or oh, Michael Ballard just pushing, pushing that Ferrari. Is he going to go on the outside of Stowe? Is he going to make the stick? Oh, I think he might go a little bit wide. Yep, he does. He has to give that position back. Uh, behind them is James Johnson, who we saw in third place earlier on in the race. Um, and he is getting very close to this group now. This, Well, these two uh, with Michael Ballard and Oscar Hardwick. So James Johnson trying to take advantage of the opportunity of the two cars being slow now that they are battling. Um, yeah, so, yeah you got to think... Jo <coughs> Sorry, Johnson was up to second at one stage, wasn't he? So you'd expect yeah. he might be able to battle back past a couple of these these guys, although of course these are not bad markers, these are, are very, very good drivers up at this level. <coughs> yeah, that is that is very true. Uh, any driver driving around the track at the moment is highly skilled and will defend you as much as they possibly can. Currently though we yeah. have a BMW leading a BMW, leading a Ferrari 458, a Ferrari 458 and then Oscar Hardwick in his 430, followed by the Jag XKR of Michael Ballard. Michael Ballard, though, he has dropped two places since the start. Obviously, that was at the start, and he hasn't been able to make an impression since. Um, but in the consideration that someone's qualified you know, higher than where they currently are, um, this is the thing that, that interests me most, is that the difference between qualifying pace and race pace, there is such a difference sometimes. You know, um, you know we see this in Formula 1 with um, Mercedes when they've got um, a car that can take pole pretty much in most of the races, but then struggles in the race. And I'm wondering if tyre degradation is going to be a key thing here, and if this affects cars differently. I mean, obviously it will affect cars differently, but I'm just wondering which ones it will affect more. 
Oh, definitely. We, we've seen some cars pitting at the 30 minute mark. Um, and then equally we've, we've seen some of the top runners pitting with 10 minutes to go. Just as a little... Um, almost the, it's causing too much of a problem by that stage. Um, but then the people that do pit don't always change their tyres. Like Cooper and Hardwick, I think last time out, I think actually Hardwick had a uh, real tyre degradation right towards the end. And we even saw a couple of people having punches on the last lap, um, causing real problems for everyone. I think it was Roy Scroton. I think he went over the line with a puncher last time um, and dropped a few places on that last lap. So it's a bit of a shame. But it's whether or not you can get it quite. You know, it can make such a big difference. To change the tyres is about 30 odd seconds in the pit. Yep, and Michael Ballard there getting alongside Oscar Hobbit once again. He's just not got the pace. James Johnson is going to take advantage of this. And there we go. Is he going to get up into the sixth place that Michael Ballard once held? Michael Ballard is going to have the inside heading onto the Wellington Strait. Um, so, who? I wonder if which one of them has the pace to actually get past. Oscar Harvick. It seems like Oscar Harvick is just holding them back at the moment. Michael Ballard on the inside of Brooklyn. Is he going to get this move done? Oscar Harvick looks to the inside. Is he going to get back? No, it looks like Michael Ballard has got this sorted out as he heads into Luffield. James Johnson is James going to have it as well. Oscar Harvick even more. And pardon? I think he's going to have him there. If I'm honest, he's got the insides. Yeah. Oh, James Although, Johnson, Hardwick's please. doing well. It is side by side as they head into cops. Who will lift off? Who, who will get out of the firing zone? Absolutely neither of them. They almost go side by side through cops. James Johnson is not going to have the drive heading down towards Maggots, Beckers and Chapel. Hardwick will though, as Hardwick got the slight cut back. However, Hardwick does have to yield. Hardwick yields to Johnson. Johnson retakes sixth place, trying to scythe his way through the field once again. Um, you know, oh, I think I can see rain again. Uh, yep, you can. I think there's a little bit coming through. It could really mix things up once again. We've all got to love a bit of rain and World GT always. World GT and rain go hand in hand. And I wonder if this rain will be heavy enough to push any driver into the pits. Uh, at, in fact, Oscar Hardwick there jumps straight into the pits. I wonder if he will actually be entering out, you know, exiting the pit lane on some wet. So I think we'll have to keep an eye on that. I, don't, I can't see whether a driver heads on to wets or not. I don't think if you can either. But, no, unfortunately. Uh, but I th it looks like he's actually serving a self drive through. No, he is. He does look like he is. Oh, is he stopping? Sorry. No, I'm he right. Stopping. He's stopping. He stopped. It, you can all, you'll, we'll be able to know if he changes tyres just based on the time he's in the pits. Yeah. Um, I'm, just, I'm just wondering if, if, if he does change onto wets. As going by what you said earlier, is that it is far, far too early to change onto the pits. 37 minutes have gone. Um, to change onto the wets, even to change onto the pits, is a very, very bad move. You can't change onto the pits. Um, but I'm just wondering. He's dropped his car down now. And um, interesting stuff now coming to you with the, uh, the pit lane action. Let's see where, what's going on out on track. Uh, we've got a guest. We've got um, Junt and Hicken going side by side going through Luffield um, and I believe that's Junt got past there in his BMW as they head onto the old pit straight Glenn Guest in 6th place Glenn Guest has done pretty well to keep that to get that car into 6th place I think he had a good start he got from 7th to 6th uh, to and then he was in 3rd for a long time um, so why he's in 6th place I don't know I may be reading this completely wrong though um, he's I don't think he's been quite that high, but he, we've seen some really good bits of him. I think in uh, Monza, I think particularly him and, and Miles Dixon, his teammate, um, had a great race, but they have had a, a couple of rounds which they probably wouldn't be quite so proud of, but they did start showing a bit more, uh, like coming back last last round, and obviously he's up for it this time. I mean, chasing down James Johnson there. Yep, I do believe though, Guess, yes, because Guess, I remember the two four five eights sitting in third and fourth, so Guess must have been that high, if not, I am, I am completely reading this wrong, and you are correct, but we will find that out ever so shortly. Jake Cooper though is uh, in third place either way, and he's looking to be closing that gap to Fiddick, he's got seven seconds between himself and the, uh, the Midnight Motorsports driver, and you know, this is this is just one of those things. If it rains heavily, who will take advantage of it? Who's going to have the drive to actually get past who? 
Morton Vernison and uh, Hansen, they are both pretty close on track at the moment. There's about point three. They are in point P9 and P10. Um, so there's not too much of a gap between them. And then further back, you have Franz Schneider, uh, Bryson and Palm. They're all within about 10 seconds of each other, which, you know, as, as I think we said earlier on, with this being an hour long race with um, 34 minutes remaining, is that you know, it's, this is pacing yourself, whether you're taking too much out of the tyres. It's all about, you know, fuel management is even a very key part of this. Uh, on my screen, though, however, Palm is under attack by Williams in P13. Uh, so Williams there is in 14th place. He's dropped some, considering he started in 9th um, and has moved down. He, he got dropped down to about 15th place and started to move his way back up again. Um... But, yeah, that that car, the Chevrolet, I'm just wondering, has it got the pace to get past this BMW? And if so, which sector can he get past? It's always a tough call with these. I mean, um, I think if, uh, if we'd had my normal uh, James in here, obviously that's his team. Williams there, the six actors, so um, he might give us some insight into that. But I know that with our... We also obviously drive the Chevrolet, um, and it is a little bit of a beast. Um, but it's mostly the same as any of these. If you can get a good slipstream down into any of these, the, I think with this weather at the moment, it, it's who can get the best drive out of a corner. The car itself is, is anyone's game. I could have told you what's going on. The dry as we speak is actually just uh, just gone wide there, Palm, on the grass, and still keeps the place though. Yep, and I'm just going to point it out that it is ever so slightly drying out once again. Uh, in fact, it does look pretty bone dry as they're heading down. Uh, as a couple of drivers are heading down the hangar straight, so it's looking it's looking like it's drying up. Um, and this this is the thing. This is the mixed conditions. Mixed conditions, I think, are some of the trickiest because it's the it's where it's not quite wet and it's not quite dry. And so you know you're on the slicks, uh, you know you're, you know you're on the hard, the, the dry tyres, and you don't have the grip necessary. You go onto the wets, and you still don't have the grip necessary. As oh, that oh, is. And we've got guest on Johnson there. Johnson locked up, and then guest locked up straight after an almost spun over, kept it going. Uh, this is the battle for fifth. I think we're at now. Fifth, yeah, sixth, and seventh. There. Looking at that, Ballard's gotten himself up into third place. So he's in the podium position at the moment. Is Michael Ballard? Yeah, with a couple of other people dropping down for one reason or another, he's done well. He's kept himself consistently there. Um, hopefully, he can keep it going. This is very close now for uh, with guest on Johnson. Yeah, and that is why I've just had a little look. In fifty place now is Jake Cooper. He's dropped his Ferrari four five eight. I think he must have pitted. Looking at the uh, the times, let's have a look. He's dropped. I can't see how much time he's dropped at the moment um, because it's not quite updated on my timings. But he's dropped to 15th place now, and that is a considerable margin. He is now 1 minute and 14 seconds off of the lead. So, you know, he's dropped quite the margin. If, if he has pitted, that does surprise me. It's very early. Well, I mean, we, you, are, uh, we are surprisingly halfway through the race. I think this is Guest trying to get past Johnson. Uh, he has. Yep, and Guest is now past Johnson. And so, good move there from, from Guest, just to break just a little bit later, and I'm sure that makes you cringe ever so slightly <laughs> I try obviously not to be biased in these things I mean it's uh, yeah it's not nice to see but I know he's got the talent I mean I've only got one car in this in this race at the moment um, after Grotty didn't quite make the grid so unfortunately but it's you know 30 minutes like you say still to go it's an awful lot can happen we've seen an awful lot happen already um, and that's just James let alone <laughs> Guest and Cooper's just still going strong. I keep forgetting that he's out there 13 seconds ahead of everyone else. Um, yeah, I, he's got such a margin, has Alex Cooper. But, I mean, fifth place, still a good result. And as you say, anything can happen. We still have 30 minutes remaining. We aren't quite halfway yet. We have about 40 seconds to go until we are halfway through this race. And, in fact, that would make us halfway through the championship. But, um, you know, looking at that... As we said, anything can happen. Anyone can make a mistake. We've seen mistakes from quite a lot of drivers. Is James Johnson? Is, no, he wasn't quite side by side. I thought he might have been going side by side there with Glenn Guest heading into Cops. Um, it goes a little bit wide on the exit, which may make him pray for Junt in the background. But don't think it's going to. Junt's going to have quite the pace. 
heading down into this complex of corners of the heading into this Maggots, Beckett's and Chapel complex. But, I mean, this, this is the thing. This is what the drivers have to be focused on. is, is focused on their current drive, not, not looking at, um, you know, I mean, yes, you, you, you obviously have to focus on the future to a certain degree, but you've got to focus on the now. The now is more important than the before or than the future. If you don't get the now right, then, you know, you're going to struggle. And that is that is the key. That is what you have to focus on. Is the now. I think. And Johnson dives into the pits. Dives into the pits. Yes, that is correct. So, oh, and there's another one behind him. Uh, that was an SLS. I think that was Morton Vernison. Yes, it was. That's where we at? And Cooper's pitted as well. Interesting stuff. So Cooper's now dropped down the order. We're having a quite large order change, as few of the drivers have pitted. Um, yep, Vernison's pitting now. Oh, actually, um, but I, I'm. Absolutely shocked that these drivers are stopping at the halfway point. It's it's proved to be the completely wrong decision on every track we've raced on so far. Um, they've always lost out to whoever's stayed out to about 10 or 15 minutes before the end. Um, obviously, the tyre degradation can make such a difference, and it make we don't know, of course, the people that have stopped if they've uh, changed tyres or not. Yeah, uh, I'm just going to point out one thing that we brought this up um, earlier on as Morton Vernison's apparently out of the race with an engine problem. Um, yeah, that is correct. So Morton Vernison now out of the race. I believe that is the second SLS Black that is out of the race. Um, yep, Melchiorus went out earlier on. I saw Hardwick, who's now in 13th place, have a little bit of an iffy moment coming uh, into the final sector, into Vale, where... Uh, no, it was actually it was into Stowe. We've got uh, Fiddick in the pits as well now. Bump Morby, and who was this? Was Fiddick in the pits? I'm Fiddick in the pits, our leader, that. which should allow Michael Ball uh, to go through. Yeah, he's not pitting, so that'll take him through to lead the race for at least a little while. So there you go. That's that's pretty good. After a DNF in Germany, Michael Ballard will take the lead of the British World GT race here this evening. Um, Fiddick now jump actually moves up into second place in, in his Z4. And Fiddick is obviously still in the pits. Whereabouts is Alex Cooper? Alex Cooper is now coming into Vale. Uh, and then he's about to head around Club and obviously down the pit straight. So I think Alex Cooper is is going to have a decent lead, um, theoretically. If, no, if, if everyone pits, then Alex Cooper is obviously going to maintain that massive lead that he had. Oh, that was a, that was a BMW going sideways there. Who was that? Um, let's have a look. I believe that was Palm, that Palm? in his Tarn yeah. Motorsports BMW Z4. Uh, currently, we've got a BMW Z4 in 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th and 6th. So there you go. BMW having a, a pretty good result at the moment. That, that seems to be the car to be in, other than uh, Michael Ballard's XKR, as we've just seen. Um, did, did I just see that car going sideways? The uh, the Simcraft Midnight Motorsports car. I don't know who that was. No, that, that, that wasn't that. Um, we had a spinner from one of the back marks, don't worry. Okay, uh, the Ferrari fine. there behind. But we've got both the Midnights there, and uh, who else have we got still going at the moment? James Johnson's there, Jake Cooper, Glenn Guest back out. Uh, well, I'm going to be wondering now so, is Michael Ballard going to enter the pits? Is this lap going to mean he's going to return to the pit? So he's, he's locking up there, going into Stowe. I, you know, going going by what you said with the yep, he's he is heading straight into his pits. Yep. I would have assumed as much. You know, with tire degradation, as you said, pretty high here, um, and a pit stop strategy <clears> is is going to be pretty crucial. And getting that right, pitting at the right time. So with Ballard pitting now, Junt is going to take the lead of the uh, yep, he's going around. British um, race. So. Interesting, interesting stuff. This is the part of the race that I enjoy, when you don't really know who's where, you know, who's doing what. It's always an interesting section uh, of the race. You know, it's just like a, it's moving it on into another chapter, as it were. It's just I, to see where is what's happening where. You should have been here last last month, um, where we had at this point in the race we had horrendous lag issues as well. So everyone was pitting. We didn't know where anyone was. People were jumping up and down the timings board. It sorted itself out after two or three laps, but you'd have absolutely loved it. 
Ah, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's always a wonderful feeling to know absolutely nothing about what is going on. It's fantastic. <laughs> Franz Schneider now in second place. Uh, Palm moves up into third, and that is your top three at the moment. Alex Cooper, after his pit stop, is 21 seconds off of the lead in fourth, which I'm still going to put it down to Alex Cooper is theoretically leading the race. I think um, Junt Schneider and Palm are going to pit before the end of the race. I, I if, oh, if most, most yeah. of the other people have, I just see that as a likely thing. Oh, actually, um, one thing to point out, Jake Cooper's DNF. Uh, why that is, I'm not sure, but Jake Cooper is out of the race. A further retirement um, to the race. And I will actually flick through now the DNFs of the moment. We have Morton Vernison, who uh, had an engine problem. Lewis Redshaw, uh, Nico DeConnick, Simon Melhewish, Ben Horrell. Uh, Andres Waters, and I think, yeah, Simon, uh, Sean Stroud. Sean Stroud was the other DNF. So, um, so what we've just, like a good <clears throat> at the moment for what we've just drivers. watched, what we've just watched there is Cooper taking palm, which technically is for position. Um, because his palm's not pitted yet, but that actually moves, moves Cooper up again. Very well. Uh, I've just got a message from James Kirk asking if he would like to join. Uh, I don't know what, the, what what goes on here, if he's allowed to or not, but why not? <laughs> I don't know if I can put up with both of you. Oh, uh, well, that would be great <laughs> fun. <laughs> this uh, Let's at least get all the pits up sources so and we know what on earth we're doing before we start. Don't know what's going on on the track, let alone what's going on in the pit box. So, we've still got Junt out. He hasn't pitted yet in the Northern, he's still going. But Cooper is now still sitting in second. Well, in typical fashion, not really knowing what's going on, James Kirk is now in the commentary box. Hello, James. I am determined not to miss a commentary this year, guys. Absolutely <laughs> determined. I have literally hot footed it from my graduation evening of sixth form to be here to watch this race. Can I have a quick update on what's going on? Well, Alex <laughs> Cooper, I'm going to assume, is still leading. However, Junt is theoretically in the lead of the race. However, Junt's not pitted yet. Most right. of the drivers that we've seen have pitted. Right. Um, Alex Cooper's gotten past Franz Schneider, who's not pitted yet. Martin Palm hasn't pitted yet. Fiddick, um, who's Alex Cooper's teammate, uh, has pitted, uh, and he's in fifth place. And there's BMWs in P1, P2, P3, P4, and P5. And I also see Jake Cooper's retired again. Yep. Uh, what is it with that man and Halfton's accidents? I mean, Mike, you'll, you'll support me on this. Like, every single time he's taken part in the race, he's had some kind of flaw halfway through the it, race. Were you able to catch what was going on? Uh, we didn't, actually. He just pitted. Um, unfortunately, he is Mr. Unfortunate. Um... Oh, and uh, that looks like... Is that Hardwick causing problems there as well? He's just having a few lock-ups and nearly losing another place. Uh, but he do Jake does always make it uh, interesting to watch, definitely. Yeah, that Who, was Hammy Hardwick getting a bit out of shape in front of Hicken, and I apologise, James, for cutting you up there. No, 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 I'm just interested how many other retirements we have now. That's the thing. Well, I can give uh, we, run We've just run through. I think we had about six or seven, haven't we, now? I think uh, it's not many. I believe that number's actually looking at it. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, pretty much oh. ten. Oh, my apologies. Uh, a lot more than I imagined. Do you, do you want me to run through it again? No, no, let's, let's get... No. Well, I don't mind. I'm just... A... <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a quick run through of the top ten first. We've got David Junt uh, lining up in first place at the moment. Alex Cooper. Oh, actually, actually, look at Alex Cooper. There was a couple of drivers who spun out in front of him. Uh, there was Fuller, who was sideways. He was... Um, coming through the arena, the new arena section, so I bet that scared him a little bit. Could have cost him a couple of places, maybe even the race, but Alex Cooper just dodges that load and keeps his car on track. Franz Schneider in third place, Martin Palm in fourth, David Fiddick in fifth, James Johnson in sixth, Michael Ballard in seventh. He was leading the race a bit earlier on, but has now dropped after a pit stop. Uh, Hansen is in eighth, Hardwick, who's had some arguable moves uh, throughout the race is in ninth and Hicken in 10th um, so that, that's really what's been going on now um, I'm, I'm a little surprised the, the three guys that we were talking about who haven't pitted we're, we've got 20 minutes to go now the, this is what I was expecting the strategy to be like for everyone 
But I mean, uh, James will back me up here that uh, realistically anyone who stopped on the half hour mark struggled in the last few rounds. But all the top guys decided to this time. Oh, I see one of the uh, TSAs there has spun. I'm not sure, is that Philip Morby? Yes, it is Philip Morby. Um, but yeah, w the usual thing that we've seen is, I think with the exception of Nürburgring possibly, everyone who's sort of gone more towards the end and then pitted, usually not only gets a shorter pit stop, but also, I mean, they come out into the lead of the race nicely, and I'll take the uh, example from Austria, which we saw the biggest uh, ch well, change of position, if you will. It was Pedro Malim, and he was constantly in fourth for a lot of that race. Pitted very near the end, and he came out into the lead of the race, and I think it was only through his own mistakes that he really did lose the lead. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm just looking at all these different pit strategies. I'm surprised. I really am to see so many people going half and half again. Yeah, I am. I mean, we've got Junt at the moment. He's got 18 minutes to go. He's lapping at reasonable time. He's in the lead. All right, Cooper is catching him, but he's got a 17 and a half second lead. Now, if he does one of these, which we've seen people do, with say five or ten minutes to go, just a slap dash for the fuel, don't touch the tires. If he can keep them going, you know your pit stop's only going to be about that sort of time. There's no reason why he couldn't come out, you know, second, third, something like that. Which you think if you're starting to beat Fiddick and Johnson and Ballard, you know. He's come from nowhere. The same with um, whoever got in the third there and Palm and uh, you know the two guys there in third and fourth. They're only at you know they're quite away. They're only a few seconds behind Cooper. Well, you, know, you say that. You say that Palm and Schneider have just pitted. Have they? They well, have indeed. <laughs> yep. And yeah, they have literally. They they're only leaving the pits now. Franz Schneider comes back out into tenth. Palm back out into eleventh. And so they are still quite a way behind them, fortunately. I will just like to say, shout out to Lewis McGlade, because this is what I would say this was his first lead commentary job. And so I'm very gracious to still have you in the room. And thank you very much for doing the great job that you have done in my absence. Um, especially, especially from what I heard. I mean, you know, I was just listening in, being a bit cheeky. Great job there, sir. Um, but yeah, I think... Oh, uh, and as, we, oh. as we're talking, yes, I was going to say. Ah, thank you, Lewis. You know... We've got our leader in the pits, and um, we'll be interesting to see how far back he goes. We're going to think he's going to come out in about 8th or ninth, somewhere around there. It would look like it, especially given how far behind uh, Schneider and Palm are now. I'm impressed by Fiddick, actually, to see him up in second position. The last I remember of him, he was covering for Euler in Spa and retired in the early stages. Uh, where did he qualify? Uh, he actually qualified second. He was second uh, again. in in, sp in Spa, though, he, he was thrown in that day. So I don't know how much uh, notice he's been given here. Um, as we're sitting here, Junt's on 23 seconds stop, 24, so he's doing the whole lot. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, he's not going to gain as much as the first four, as goes through Fiddick there, I think, going past. Yep, Felix passed. I think Johnson's easily going to pass him as well, as well as Michael Ballard, Frodo Han Oh, wow, Frodo Hansen up there again. Oh, good job by these guys. Um, but, yeah, I... <sighs> This is, uh, the one thing that I'm thinking of now, is you had a look at Euler at Nürburgring last month. And he won the race, and he was looking, you know, quite strong to possibly eat into Cooper's lead. And yet, here he is, not again, and look who is there on top. It, Cooper just puts himself in all these brilliant situations. And whether it's the luck of the draw on who actually comes to these races, or... No, it's just falling perfectly into Cooper's favour, and here he is once again leading the race, looking to be on for his third victory of the season here. Yeah, yeah it's also, turning out almost. Sorry. Oh no, you go there. <laughs> uh, it's quite difficult with three people. Um, yeah, yeah unfortunately. Three's a crowd. <laughs> yeah, true that. Uh, Midnight Motorsports, they're having a really great season, considering you look at the um, the opposition for them. And they have such a lead over them in, in comparison. Let's have a look at the point standings at the moment. Um, you know, their drivers, you know, basically uh, the top two drivers on the championship, Alex Cooper and um, Euler, you know, that they're basically dragging Midnight Motorsports into what is before this race a 94 point lead, which is an incredible lead. Um, you know, over over the opposition at this, well, I would say it's fairly early stage. We're, we're just passing the halfway point at the end of this race um, in the championship with only four rounds to go. So Midnight Motorsports are looking extremely strong in the championship standings. And I must ask you, Mike, I mean, of course, you and Bodwell are 
the closest competition to Midnight at the moment. And I mean, it's, it, in, a, in a sense, it's crazy to think that. And it's really through your two new drivers. I see that Puoti is not here, unfortunately. But he, you know, he was here and he, he qualified himself up in seventh, I believe. But unfortunately, got booted just before the start. Uh, I mean, you, these things surely cannot be a help to you because, you know, as, as you are in second, you are, as I say, the closest competition to midnight. At this point of the stage, I mean, Lewis rightly says, you know, we are over halfway through the season now. Once the points are dished out here, we'll only have four rounds. So it's crazy to think that now. Four rounds remaining. What do you think, you know, from your side as a team manager, what do you think needs to be done in the next few races? I mean, is it just hope or do you feel that you might need a little bit of luck on your side in the form of maybe a couple of midnight retirements? Well, to be honest, it, it's... Uh... Let's be realistic. That first position, if Midnight turn up to every race from now on, it's theirs. It's it's as simple as that. I apologise for the actual constructors championship. If they turn up for the next four races, then because we ultimately missed the first couple of races with a couple of drivers, so um, the consistency is not there. The only team that really had a a shot at them after the first race, Simming, and they haven't turned up since then, really. So, well, um, I can I can definitely say that I was having a little chat with Dave. Um, the other day, and he's basically confirmed to me that Simink has, well, they technically retired from the championship at Monza. Um, Dave had a little fun round at Nürburgring, but apart from that, they were never planning to enter any more races apart from Monza. But, but you look at it, and they're still sitting third in the constructors. Yeah. It, it's And really, they've what, entered two races? I mean, that's not... Well, they've, they've only had two-point scoring positions, and that was a first and a yeah. third in Monza. Yeah, which just shows that you know the consist but the consistency of Midnight is, is just impressive. They've they got two top drivers and they're here every week and they're consistently top every single week. I mean, I know I've got James Johnson sitting there, who if he's at the present sitting in third, and he'd actually have been on the podium every race if he, that he's been in if he gets this one, which is a, a great achievement for him and I'm very happy for him. But we, you know, it's still ultimately we've got two Midnights, first and second. I mean, um, you, could, you could argue that they got three good drivers. There's David Felix up there as well. I mean, well, I'm of course. There's two more questions I actually want to know since I haven't been here this entire time. Firstly, where did Cooper qualify as in Alex? First. Uh, yeah. Was he pole position? Pole position. Yeah. So, midnight motorsport. He's, wow. he's led from start to finish. He's been, you know, we can't really fault him, to be honest with you. Um, Astonishing. His first pole position of the year as well. Oh, and I see there's... Oh, I do apologise. I think we've got a bit of jostling for position. Yes, we do. Uh, in the form of Fran Schneider and Martin Baum. I was keeping the lie on this battle. But, uh, these two came out of the pits almost side by side. And they have not let go of each other at all. And I... Oh, is it a bit lower? What is going on down there? Oh, that is... Okay, that's the main reason why I was looking at changes. Oscar Hardwick and Timu Toika have pitted. So Hardwick for Woods, Toika for FA. Uh, Toika has come back out into 18th. So he's a lap... Is he a lap down? Goodness me. Oh yeah, either way, uh, Hardwick is back out into 12th as well. That's why I was looking at that. Um, but yeah, it's... I'm, oh, gone. I'm just going to point out is that third and fourth, Michael Ballard is looking pretty damn strong behind James Johnson. Certainly he is. He's closed up three seconds in the last two laps. That Jaguar is looking exceedingly fast at this point in the race. And with only 11 minutes to go, will he be able to actually make a move before the end of the race? It's arguable. I mean, well... Well, we did, uh, see, we did see earlier that obviously James was one of the people that pitted on the half-hour mark. Uh, maybe he's got tyre wear issues. We're getting into the last 10 minutes now. Um, so potentially... Could be issues there for him. whereas, like you say, uh, Ballard actually will be on a lot fresher tyres because he pitted a, a bit later um, after leading that race for a few laps as well. So there's that to take into account. Uh, don't think the weather seems to have changed much, so I don't think that's a factor. No, but, but it's great I, to see. <laughs> as you uh, as you point out in the uh, when you when you messaged me on Skype earlier, James was that you said that there has been rain at every round so far in the World GT, and this Indeed. is no exception. There was rain earlier on in the race, and then, oh, it, excellent. Up, and then it rained a little bit more, and then it dried up again. And That's to be honest, excellent. looking at it now, it looks like there is a possibility of a little bit more rain to spice up the last 10 minutes of the race. Oh, and Johnson's locked up there and gone a little bit deep into that corner, but it seems to have held it so far. 
yeah, good he thing is about that car pretty damn pretty well at the moment. Good thing about Brooklyn, though, is that it's quite easy to defend into there as the left, and then you've got the tight riders there, and, and it's it's, oh, it's, yeah, it's pretty good it. to be able to. Oh, is he looking for a move there, Ballard? Oh, he just tucked back in at the very last moment. That was a very ballsy move, <laughs> almost. There he was. I was in my uh, heart's in my mouth a little bit for obvious reasons, but nonetheless, <laughs> it is a brilliant battle at the same time. Ballard, With nine though, so minutes still to go. Heading into this this complex, he's. Ballard is just, I'm not really sure where he's trying to make his move. I mean, on the in, in into the, um, but actually, as you're starting to turn left for this uh, Maggots Beckerson Chapel complex, that's not really a decent overtaking opportunity. Although, oh, however, he, he is having a look out. down oh. through Stowe, still just not got it right. He's right on the rear end of that Corvette, though. So, um, he's. it does look like he's about to make his move at any point. He looks out, still doesn't make the move. It's just not quite there for him at the moment. I do know Michael personally, um, and I will say that he will, you know, he will not go for a move unless he's absolutely confident they will be able to make him. Can he stick up the Abbey? No, no, he won't be able to do that. He's he's a very sensible driver, is Mike. Do we, and... do we think there's a little bit of not necessarily knowing these cars? Only a couple of races in, he's in knowing these. When he locks up there as well. Do we, whereas obviously James has driven a few more of, of these races now. Um, when we were saying earlier, weren't we, Lewis, that it takes a lot to overtake here and that you need to know that driver and the car in front of you to be able to really trust them to take that dive almost in these things because they're so so different, the types of cars, as opposed to when you're driving a, a single-seater series where everyone's near enough in the same type of car. It's, it's, it's possible. I mean, I... I know that Mike and uh, Thomas Jacobs, who's deputising for Neron here, I, uh, I remember that. Um, you know, they, they are quite extensive testers. And usually they go into every race trying to treat each other as equal as... Uh, you know, he, I think what Mike's is doing here is a tactic which he does in a lot of other racing series that I've seen him in. He likes to intimidate his opponents. Um, and whether that's by forcing them into a mistake there, you know, he will just look up the inside and say, oh, there he cuts the corner there. Um, but yeah, he, he, he just wants to sort of, oh, oh goodness me, let's go Scott Bennett in the background as well. But yeah, he likes to intimidate his opponents and he likes to make his presence known. He might not necessarily go for the move in the end. And I think that's where we come back to your point. You know, he doesn't necessarily know all the other drivers that well. But I still think he's going to give it a good go. Is he, oh, he's going to dive up the inside here. and oh. James isn't giving that up. Oh, that was shut the door. That's very tight. That was excellent defensive stuff, though. It does look he, he is defending this. Is James Johnson absolutely excellent? Oh, goodness I'm me! I'm surprised that wasn't contact. That was very close. <laughs> goodness me! I'm I that heart and mouth moment there. I think Mike. Mike. <laughs> Try being I, in my position. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, if Mike didn't know what James was as a or what his style as a driver was. Before that point, he certainly does know now. Um, he's, he's, God, he's not. Oh my goodness, me! He's gonna try in there. Good. He's almost gone to a standstill around the entrance to arena. But oh God, Johnson's been on the podium every single time he's raced this season, and I'm pretty sure that he doesn't want to be off of the podium this time either, especially at his home race as well. Yep, six minutes and 15 seconds remaining, and he's got that long to defend and more if he starts another lap just before that time it's, it's just Michael Ballard he pulls out he has a little look he's not quite got the car just to get it up alongside we saw this quite a bit in the Porsches obviously then they were all driving the same car but oh Michael Ballard oh, 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 oh no he's dropped it but he's going to keep going and he's going to lose oh, a place John's going to overtake there. him yeah going into the other pit but yeah David David John in the top four goodness me great hey, job he's been, him. he's been leading the race Really? Have you been? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've been away for half an hour. I, I haven't got up on everything yet. Gah. Oh, I can't so... bother to be on time. Oh, you know. So I've replaced sorry. you. Sorry. I've got. I've, oh, I've replaced you. You've abandoned sorry. me. Oh, yeah. Mike. Well, you abandoned me, technically. Oh, no. I, I... <laughs> Get I it right. Had I, had, I, had, I had something which <laughs> I had to go to. I had to go on, we're, we're to like go. an old married couple here. Let's yeah, stop. Yeah, <laughs> There is a race going on after all. We're still <laughs> seeing this battle. <laughs> oh dear me. So, Alex, oh. still at the front. 
Mm. Nearly 14 seconds ahead. Let's not forget about him. There's only five minutes to go. <laughs> He's not really yeah, well, extended that I, gap anymore, really, in the last couple of minutes, though. So, oh, well, in the last really half hour, he's not really extended that gap. No, you, I mean, we have a 14 second gap, like, you don't want to be taking risks. You, I mean, not that he's, I mean, he's still doing decent times, but he's, you know, you don't want to, you're not going to be pushing it to the ragged edge. He's, he managed to get that lead pretty much from the off. He got a good four or five seconds within the first couple of laps because everyone else was battling away behind. Um, really does prove that that pole position makes such a difference. We, I mean, sort of the same with people uh, like Dave I, Smith I, in round one. I would argue, I would argue against that point because let's not forget that Cooper started inside the top three, not necessarily on pole position. This was his first pole position of the year, but he started third in Austria, third in Spa, and yet he was still able. God, he went very wide there at Cops, but he still managed to win both of those races from third. So I think it's just about sticking it up the sharp end of the grid, not necessarily pole position, although that is you know advantage. But you just got to look at Jake Cooper from Austria at Spa at the same time and how one mistake you know he was able to lose it so easily Cooper is just consistent and he's you know proven here today how devastating he can be from that pole position indeed right just before we get into the final three minutes I'm gonna drag in uh, Mr. Jake Cooper after oh. his retirement just to let us know what's what's gone on uh, so far So that should be Jake. Have we got Jake there? Most certainly do. Right, we've got three minutes left, so I just want to see what what on earth happened. We didn't quite catch it on the uh, on the broadcast, I'm afraid. Um, <clears throat> I was qu I just passed uh, James Johnson. We had a nice little battle there. He was quite kind to me, actually. Uh, passed him into cops, and as we came to the club chicane on on the same lap, um, uh, bat marker spawn. And uh, just parked it on the track, really, right on the apex. So I had nowhere to go. I just drilled into him. That sounds really unfortunate. You were having a nice, a nice race, to be honest. We, I mean, you were yo-yoing a little bit, but we, we were excited in the commentary box here, watching you drive around. Well, I was on for a third position when the pit stops had all laid themselves out. I, I guessed, but I haven't seen like David Junt and some of the other Z4 drivers up there. Then I'm not sure if it, if that was to be, but. Uh, that's what I was hoping for, anyway. I mean, Silverstone is not one of my favourite tracks. Uh, I didn't put as much time into preparations there as I did with Spa and, and Austria, so in that respect I'm not as annoyed as I was with Spa or Austria. But then they were both my fault. The uh, retirement in Austria and the the uh, loss of the, <laughs> the win at Spa, whereas this one wasn't my fault, so... Did you put this down just as as racing incident then, and, and move on to the next round and try well, and win that it, one? Well, it, 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 it's very annoying, and you know, in the heat of the moment, you'd like to say things that maybe you'd regret, uh, you know, as uh, you know, a short while after. But yeah, you just have to get on with it. It's part of racing, especially some racing. I mean, some guys do a lot of preparation, and they don't cause any problems for people on track. And then there's other guys who don't do that much preparation. Wonder why they're you know, god awfully slow, and then they cause issues for people in the race. But it's just sim racing, that's what you get. Well, that's very unfortunate for you, and I'm sorry, and we'll hopefully we'll see, uh, see you out next time. But thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much. And we have entered the last minute, and I will say that Alex Cooper is on the final lap. He will not complete another lap. This is the last one for Alex Cooper. He has led this race since well not since the beginning because of the pit stops but effectively has he has led this race from lights out it has been a very good drive there for alex cooper his teammate as well david fiddick is in second place bringing home a one two for midnight motorsport and um you know obviously the race is not over yet and we have a couple of cars pretty much dossing it out on screen uh, for you now, let's have a look at which ones this is. I think these are. 789. 789. 789 then. So that's Bryson Schneider and Hicken. Schneider's done a pretty good job to stick it up into eighth place. Uh, he did drop back a few times throughout the race, but it's been a good job. He's going to go all not quite side by side through Abbey, but you know, it takes a very brave driver to do that. The, these two have just had Hicken in the last lap as well, so unfortunately he's dropped down from seventh to ninth there. And our time 
is going to be up now as well. So we are now past the time. Cooper. And so Cooper is coming around. Obviously, a good 14 second gap still, so we're just awaiting his arrival. This is just such good news for him at midnight, though. Not only does he gain another 25 points on his closest rival, Lucas Euler, but he gains another 25 points. And oh, hello! Oh, David Jun David Jones into the podium! He's just gone past uh, Johnson, and I'm not sure. I think that might be into cops. But yeah, yeah just look at Johnson's. Oh, and Ooh. Johnson has. Ooh, dear. Has hit into his side there and breaks it, and I uh, presume he's going to have the place. Well, Maybe not. No, he's actually. Going on, yep. Alex Cooper is rounding the final corner to win in Britain. It's his home race from his first pole position of the season. Alex Cooper extends his championship lead and wins in Britain. Excellent stuff there from him. His teammate comes in behind. David Fiddick there for second place. As was stated earlier on, David Junt is about to come around the final complex of corners in front of James Johnson for um, third place. It is an all BMW Z4 podium. James Johnson there demoted down to fourth place in the last few moments of the race. And uh, I'm sure that just twists a knife in you. <laughs> oh, he's oh. got a habit of these little things, bless him. He's uh, he's, he's had a little unfortunate so far. Oh, brilliant. He's uh, yeah, he's done a great little job for me. He's he's had a few issues in previous races with fuel consumption oh. and putting the wrong fuel in and bits and pieces, which we've heard of afterwards. I'm um, a little Broder. disappointed for him, but still, to be coming back fourth is not bad at all. Broda Hansen, what have you done, sir? I'm just so we got Michael Bald in fifth. Broder Hansen appears to have binned it. And I do wonder whether he's finished. I think, amazingly, despite... Oh, okay. I've realised what's happened now. Basically, because I joined late, I'm getting all these retirements with people crossing the line. And then quitting out. So, no, don't... Just don't bother about me. We we'll don't ignore you. Me. Don't worry. Yeah, just ignore we'll me. Just, just don't worry about it. <laughs> We're used to you now. Everyone, yeah. <laughs> if you've listened to a broadcast before with James, you'll, yeah. you'll know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, impressive drive from Froder, actually. Another sixth place on the board. Schneider, boy Bryson back on form in eighth. Uh, Glenn Guest, he's a good result. I've This is the first round Guest has been since Australia. It, no, not Australia. What am I, what am I on about? Austria. Um, yeah, times Australia. Yeah. No, no, yeah. We, don't, we, go, we do go to Australia just later. Actually, yeah. next round, even. Yeah. 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 Um, Lewis knows more than you, James. Just, yeah, you know. oh, I'm, I'm clearly out of my depth. So, so, Lewis, you predicted it right anyway. Alex, start to finish, you were saying he looked, looked as strong as anything. Obviously, <laughs> I mean, it, it doesn't sound great when you think first and second on the grid came first and second. But, I don't know about you, but I was never bored for the hour. No, there has been action throughout the grid for the entirety. It has been a pretty good race. Um, and I'd just like to say, where did you get down to? You got down to... Bryson, and then uh, behind Bryson in ninth place was Hicken, then 10th was Palm, 11th was Guest, 12th was Hardwick, which, you know, as we said earlier, there's been a few uh, questionable incidents with Hardwick, however, I think, you know, in, in a whole, it was a pretty good race. Thomas Jacobs uh, is in 13th, Matthew Williams in 14th, Mark Stanton in 15th, and that is your entirety of your points scoring positions throughout the grid. The Hardwick controversial a bit. I'm interested. I'm. I'm actually quite intrigued to see that he's moved to Woods Racing. I thought he was pretty comfortable in that BMW Z4 for SS Motorsport. Was there any reason behind his change? Do we know? Or uh, we don't know yet. Hopefully, we can find out. We might come along for an interview after. I'll, I'll run down the pit lane and see if we can grab him as well. Like I could grab Jake. Um, see what else we can get out of people. Obviously, there's only so much we can know from up here. <laughs> <laughs> How many people are there? I know there's not that many people on TeamSpeak actually today. There's quite a lot of people on their own little team ones. It's quite good. Um, just a shout out to Morby, Toka, Bennett as well, who all did finish technically, not as a uh, for any other issues, but unfortunately outside the points. So hopefully we'll get. Alex, David, and David actually um, up here as the podium places. But in the meantime, we have got Mr. John Hicken. 
waiting for us. We're just trying to think what happened with him. Anyone got any news for me? What we can? Uh, as no, not so much. You can say I am unsure. No, no problems. <laughs> I'll see what else we can go. <laughs> My apologies, I thought I'd missed something there somewhere. Don't worry. I often do. I just. <laughs> Be nice, I'd like to talk to Michael Ballard if he's around as well, because he has a brilliant little drive. Um, who have we got here? Brilliant. And we can speak to Oscar. Oscar's oh, in. excellent. Should we have a word with Oscar? Because on laps. Oscar? Oh, yeah. Oh. We were glad we managed to get a chat with you because obviously you've, you've had a what we would call an eventful race. Would you, would you agree? I would certainly agree with that. Yeah, it, it, very very difficult from beginning to end. Uh, crying shame that some more on backmarker thought that rejoining where he did on lap two or three was a good idea. So congratulations to them for ruining my race. A real high five. But. Yeah, minus that, I managed to get the damage repaired eventually. It lost me tons of time and put me off strategy, so I had to make two stops for tyres, as it were. Um, but in all fairness, looked at my times, and I was going quicker than Alex at the front once all the damage was repaired, so the pace was there today. It's a positive debut for me in the Woods car, in the Ferrari, but obviously not the one that we wanted. I'm actually, one of the questions I raise is that, you know, we saw you so competitive in the SS Motorsport BMW, of course, getting a fourth last time out at Nürburgring. What inspired you to change to the Ferrari 430 of Woods? Was it for personal reasons or was it more for car reasons? You know, do you prefer the 430? Um, probably a fair bit of both. Um, but, you know, Woods is somewhere that I've wanted to drive for a while now and it's really nice that the opportunity opened itself up there with the seat. And then at the same time, I've actually been struggling massively to get the the um, BMW set up correctly and the front engine cars in general so it wasn't so much that the 430 is a preference as much as I'm finding the mid and rear engine cars in the mod to be a lot more suited to my driving style. I did have a lot more tyre life today that was uh, hampered only by damage and the weather not being quite what I expected it to be. Right then, uh, well, well hopefully we'll see we're we going to see you in the woods next time out as well? Uh, you certainly will do I'll be here next time I can't put my finger on what the track is at the moment but I'll certainly be Bathurst ba Bathurst I think Bathurst Bathurst some Australians will beat us up for it I'm sure <laughs> um, but I'm uh, massively looking forward to that and I think if if I have an instant with a backmark like I did today I'll probably be fuming because I'm really really wanting to win that one I mean so far I've won races in uh, three series this year it would be lov lovely to make it four at GPVWC well, we wish you the best of luck next time. I want to move on because we have got our race winner as well around here now. So if I can pull him in. So I think we've got Alex. Have we got Alex here? Yep. Brilliant. So uh, a, a start to flag win. Were you, were you expecting it? Uh, no, not at all. Uh, <laughs> I thought Oscar would be, be quick and I knew, uh, knew David would be Right there as well, so no, I definitely didn't expect it. Would you say it was comfortable? You seemed to after the you pulled away after the first couple of laps and seemed to consistently have a nice you know, fourteen second lead or so. Did you feel comfortable or were you pushing it all the way? Well yeah, once I got the gap I was able to save my tires because they were they were quite a big factor today. They were wearing a lot, so once I got the gap and I was able to save tires I was pretty comfortable from there really. Okay, well, I'm, I'm just wondering, are you a fan of the circuit? Um, yeah, I like it. It's nice and flowing. Yeah, I'm just wondering, because you looked absolutely unstoppable out there in that BMW. You looked very strong. Um, does this give you, like, a confidence move, boost moving into uh, into Bathurst next time out? I don't know. I've never raced there, so it's going to be tough for me to get on the podium, probably. But um, as long as I take some points, so I guess... It's not too bad because the lead's quite uh, high in the championship. Yeah, that that win now will move you on to is it a hundred and eight? Is it hundred and eight points, which will yep. be uh, against sixty one of uh, Lucas still. You know, would you say it's in the bag? Are you thinking that way, or do you just take the next race as it comes? Yeah, definitely take the next race as it comes because you never know if you're going to get hit or if you could disconnect one race. So it could all. 
It could all go in one or two races, really. Yeah, your consistency has been been amazing. We've all been all been impressed with that across the whole season so far. It, it's great to see you, uh, you know, getting your pole position as well this time around. Yeah, I was surprised I got pole really by that much. Well, we hope that you can uh, emulate it again and keep that keep that great points haul coming. Um, want to move on and see if I can get David Fiddick in here now as well, who obviously your teammate who came in second. So thank you for joining us. Cheers. So we now got David Fiddick with us. Hello. So second place. On a, yeah. Were you expecting to drive today? Was this a late move in? Um, no, it was a, a sorted out. Uh, probably a week now. Um, Lucas is uh, off to watch MotoGP, so I got the call to step up. So we have been working hard all week, along with Alex, and come up with a good setup. Just a shame about the start. It's um, it, it's really impressive actually, because of course the last time we saw you was at Spa, out qualified yeah. Cooper first go, unfortunately retired. But I mean, your performance here is absolutely brilliant. I, I would, well, I would ask this quite liberally. I know that you are Midnight, of course, relating, and of course, Midnight absolutely dominating this championship now at the moment. Would you be tempted to look for a full-time drive elsewhere, given your speed, clearly? I mean, a second here, considering that your reserve as well is absolutely fantastic. Or are you quite content to be the fill-in man uh, for Lucas? <laughs> um... Well, firstly, I didn't DNF in Spa. It was just a very bad race. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it was good. Um, I had a good few battles with people. Um, sorry, I don't remember their names, but uh, it was nice and close. I keep forgetting it's not, you know, open top cars and that we could touch a bit. I was flashing my lights at a few, but, you know, oh well. Um, we're getting a 1 2 in Silverstone. Me and Alex, Brit 1 2 as well. It's a perfect result and for the team. Um, <laughs> I was going to try and avoid your question, but um, no, I've I've been offered a few contracts um, in in this league and Super League, but um, you know I've got a great relationship with Dave, Nick, and the rest of them. Um, it's good support all around, and you know I'm very thankful for them. And I ain't just going to jump ship at at the first offer. I want to hang around and see what goes on next season because we got a lot going on here, and it looks good for the future. Will we be seeing you in any of the other GT rounds, do you think? Any I hope in? so. Hopefully go Luke goes and watch a few more MotoGP races. And <laughs> <laughs> they're good fun. So, um, yeah, after Spa, I wasn't too sure if it was me or the car, but I picked up the pace quite quickly. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next one if I can get in and if any more comes up. Well, it was very nice to see you around and to see you obviously so high up and Getting some points on the board this time as well. Well, more so. Um, we'll move on to David Junt. I can get him in here as well. So we're going from one one David to another. Uh, we've managed third place. Was that a surprise to you as it was to everyone else at the end of the day? Very late yeah. on. Yeah, at the end of the day, I'm quite surprised with third place because... I did the usual myself, didn't have much practice, well, last I've had none, and then I was just, well, trying with fronts and having the setup used, and was just okay, cutting off into the blue, driving, qualifying in the dry, which surprised us, then starting, I think, 13th initially, then about 11th after some discuss before the start, and I've ma I, I saw that I could about be top 10 with my usual pace and it worked out it was something like up to sixth when I had probably the worst uh, moment of my race with that spin that cost me about three positions and so it was catching up again but um, well my strategy staying out long at first it didn't look that great but after several laps I noticed that I was catching quite a lot and it came all down to the last lap and even now, I'm not quite sure if I should be that much uh, happy about first place because 
I kind of feel like it, it, it ended in a strange way. I didn't want it to end like because I was maybe going a bit too carefully into the messes and then I saw James coming up and whoops, well, got a punt and I went straight across the grass a bit, well, taking it easy probably. But then, well, I've kept ahead and finished third. So, um, well, not yet really as uh, uh, ecstatic about it as I <coughs> could be, but um, well, I'm already happy about being top five here, so but it would be cool if I'm keeping it. I'm well, sure. obviously we won't know that for now, but I'm sure you would. It, from our point of view, it seemed quite good, but obviously it's not all our point of view that counts. Did you not find problems with tyre wear? You seem to be one of the ones that went the longest on the on your tyres. Everyone else been complaining of tyre tire wear issues? Yeah, well, maybe it was because of the less running I, well, none I had. I was just, I felt quite good even, I was on the gate looking at it and I saw about 20% left. It went really a bit squirmy, but it was okay because I really looked about being precise and careful, especially at the turn I was spinning in because I nearly did it several times again. And well, it was manageable, and the pace was okay. So I went longer and longer, and went one lap longer than I wanted because France wanted to pit, and we weren't sure if it would meet in the pit. So I went one more. It'd be a bit too much, but it was kind of manageable. I've had worse problems in other months, in other in my Super League car, but this was well. I do really good with these World GT cars, so I'm I'm, I'm really happy having such a good pace. It's it's great to see you up though. Obviously, after the uh, the eighth last time to get yourself onto the podium is a, is a great result, and having done it through the strategy as well with the longer run, so it's, it's an impressive drive. Um, so thank you for joining us as well. So, I we might us. see an Nord we might see a Norton win later, won't we? Oh, who knows? <laughs> I hope so. But uh, it's, it's improving <laughs> from one race after each other. First bad luck at the first races. Now into the top 10, now top 3, well, who knows, with a bit more pace, maybe. Excellent Fantastic. Job, well, the driver that you overtook on the last lap has joined us as well, so should we see his opinion of things and what, what happened there? So if we... We should now have James Johnson as well. Hello, hello. Hello. Oh. Right, James. Last lap. Um, yeah. Yeah. Was well. We we were just talking to David here. Said he was taking a little bit easy. I mean, into Maggots Beckett's racing incident was it? Um, I'd say it's more my fault. My tires were absolutely knackered. Um, but um, I weren't expecting him to break as hard, and uh, because I carry a lot. And I mean a lot more speed through there, so um, I'm, uh, I just tapped him. I tried to avoid him by taking all of the curve, but I still tapped him, and he went off. And I just, I didn't, I just didn't overtake him once he got back on the track. Are you disappointed that your run of uh, podiums has come to an end? Yeah, um, yeah, um, that was so close, really, but. I just didn't have a lot of time. I've just been low of commitments recently, so I just haven't had a good. I haven't had a good time building the setup. I haven't really built a setup. I managed to get it from Alessandro, so um, I just haven't had a really. I just had a lot of time to practice either, so I've just been all over the place. Does does it make it worse that it was on the final lap, or is it just? It's one of those disappointing things. Anyway, you just you can't. Mm. I knew I could get overtaken by someone. I was just, I was so slow. It was just, I just couldn't do anything. I was, if someone, had, if someone caught up to me, I was just all over the show. I just couldn't keep the car where I wanted it to go. I was just, it just seemed like I had a load of built-in understeer instead of. I like my cars more neutral than understeery. Well, obviously, from my point of view. It's a shame, but equally a fourth is a great result there for you. Uh, yeah, I just, I just, I just got to keep the consistency up. It's, uh, it's, it's and, all right keeping podiums, but you know, 
You can't, you can't win them all and get podiums every single time. Well, unless you're an alien. <laughs> Brilliant, James. Well, thank you for joining us again. Oh. And I think, guys, that is our that was our top four. We don't often get to speak to the whole top four. Um, right. Any last thoughts from you both? Well, I I really enjoyed that race. I thought we had um, you know a lot of action throughout, and the weather played into it not quite as much as I thought. But you know we still had quite a lot going on. Good race, and I think it was a deserved win for Cooper. I think my thoughts for Bathurst is: Will there be rain? The question I think is more than likely there is because it just seems to come at the worst time for everyone. But I think you know we just look at what Cooper can do from pole position, what he's been able to do from the second row so many times. You know, after looking at this championship for five rounds now, looking like the hot favourite, I'd say. A lot of people are dropping away from him now. Definitely, I don't think we can look past him. You know, at the end of the day, it's, it's been a pretty dominant week, weekend here for him. Um, he's got that much of a lead in front. Um, and then, you know, we're going on to the next round, like you say, about rain. I was, it's a shame that there wasn't much uh, rain here, really. I was expecting more. Um, I want to thank yeah, Lewis for being here and stepping in as well. Absolutely. Um, and obviously James for joining me eventually. I was more of a nuisance, really. True that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank you for doing the cameras. Some good stuff we saw. I think, I think as, a, as a whole, we, we pulled together and showed off a very good race. Um, but as I think... This is this is pretty much the end of the broadcast now. I'm going to tell the, you that uh, next time is on the 25th of July. We'll be at Bathurst for, for the Australian race. And we've not got too many rounds to go. Only four rounds until the end of the season. And hopefully we're going to see some good races just to finish it off. I don't think the championship is going to be that close considering the margin. But... You know, we're, we're all here for the individual races, and that is what it's all about. If you've liked it, I am actually going to say that you should go over to the uh, the GPVWC channel on YouTube because it's all on there. And uh, from myself, Lewis McGlade, and everyone else here, goodbye.